We're going to go through the solubility curve basic introduction. We'll start with the intro to solubility curve and look at the different ways it can be used. We'll figure out the solubility and temperature using the solubility curve. We'll determine if a given solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated based on the certain conditions, and compare the solubility of different substances. Let's start with what is solubility curve. Basically, it's just a graph that shows you solubility versus temperature. It tells us the solubility of specific solute at different temperature in a given solvent. How can we use the solubility curve? Well, we can use the solubility curve to figure out how much solute can dissolve in a specific amount of solvent at a specific temperature. We can also use it to figure out if a solution will be unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated given the amount of solute, amount of solvent, and the temperature. And we can also use it to do comparison between substances. We can use it to compare the solubility of various substances. Basically, the graph looks like this. We have on the y-axis the solubility. The unit that is used is usually grams of the solute in 100 ml of H2O. Sometimes you may come across solubility curve where the y-axis unit is grams of solute over 100 grams of H2O. It just depends on how the solvent was measured and that's how it's presented. Usually, we determine the solubility in water because water is a universal solvent. However, you can generate solubility curve for other solvent as well. On the x-axis is the temperature and the unit that we use is degree Celsius. Here are the solubility curve for some substances. We have potassium nitrate, ammonium bromide, copper sulfate, potassium chlorate, sodium chloride, and barium bromate. Let's look at the first way that we can use solubility curve, which is to extract solubility information. So here's a sample question that can be asked. We're basically asked to find the mass of potassium nitrate, KNO3, that can be dissolved in 100 ml of water at 40 degrees Celsius. So we're given the temperature and we're given the amount of the solvent, which is 100 ml. So basically what we want to do is we want to first locate the solubility curve for KNO3. Now in this case, it's the purple curve. In order for us to find the mass of KNO3, what we want to do is we find the temperature at 40 degrees Celsius. So since the temperature is on the x-axis, we look for 40 and we're going to draw a line up until it hits the curve. And then we're going to draw a horizontal line to the left to find the solubility. So we're going to draw that and that is going to give us 64 grams. What that means is 64 grams of KNO3 can be dissolved in 100 ml of water at 40 degrees Celsius. That is the solubility of KNO3 at the given condition. Another way that we might be asked to find the solubility information is the reverse. We're given the mass, we're given the solvent information, and then we're asked to find the temperature. So in this case, we're asked to find the temperature when we're given 60 grams of copper sulfate, which is CuSO4, that can be dissolved in 100 ml of water. So the first thing we're going to do is locate the solubility curve for copper sulfate, which is the orange curve. Now that we've figured out where the curve for CuSO4 is, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for 60 grams. So solubility is on the y-axis, so we look for 60 and then we're going to draw a horizontal line across to the right hand side until it hits the curve for CuSO4 and then we're going to draw a line straight down and then read the temperature. So this is what we're going to do. At 60, we draw a line across, hit the curve, look down and that temperature is 59 degrees Celsius. So basically what it means is at 59 degrees Celsius, we can dissolve 60 grams of copper sulfate in 100 ml of water. And that is the solubility of copper sulfate. So these are the two examples where we can extract solubility information from the curve. The next way that we can use solubility curve is determining the concentration. So here's an example. We're asked if the copper sulfate solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. 
and the information we're given is 40 grams of copper sulfate in 100 ml of water at 70 degrees Celsius. Just a quick explanation on how we can look at the curve. Now, anything that is below the curve for copper sulfate, which is the one that's highlighted, that region would be unsaturated, which means if we were to add more solid, the solution can still dissolve those solid. And that's what unsaturated solution means. If you're interested to find out more on solubility and concentration, I do have a video. I'll place the link in the description box below. Moving along, for mass that is on the line of that solubility curve, that would be a saturated solution. For mass that is above the solubility curve, that would be a super saturated solution. We have 40 grams of copper sulfate at 70 degrees Celsius. So if we were to locate that, it would be right here, which means 40 grams at 70 degrees Celsius is an unsaturated solution because the solubility at 70 degrees Celsius is 72 grams. So that means if we were to prepare 40 grams of copper sulfate in 100 ml of water at 70 degrees Celsius, the solution that we prepared is not saturated yet. We can keep adding up to 72 grams of copper sulfate before it reach saturation. Another way to think about this is, at our given condition, 40 grams is much lesser than 72 grams, which is the solubility of copper sulfate at the given condition. So that means the solution is unsaturated. So you can either use the mass, compare the given mass with the solubility mass, and then determine if it's unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated, or you can visually locate the given condition and see where it's situated in the solubility curve. If it's below the curve, that will be unsaturated. If it's on the curve, that will be saturated. And if it's above the curve, it will be supersaturated. So using our 70 degrees and 100 ml water condition, 40 grams will produce an unsaturated solution. If we add 72 grams, that would produce a saturated solution. And if let's say we were to add like 100 grams of copper sulfate, that would have produced a super saturated solution. Hope that's clear. Now we move on to a third example where we can use it to do comparison. So in this question, we're asked to find at what temperature is the solubility of NaCl and KClO3 the same? So the first thing we need to do is locate the two solubility curve. NaCl is the yellow one and KClO3 is the blue one. So we're asked to find at what temperature is the solubility the same. In order to determine what temperature the solubility is the same, we first have to find where the two curves intersect. Where they intersect, that's the point where they have the same solubility. All we have to do then is just look down and figure out what is that temperature. So the intersection between the two curves is right here. And if we were to look down, that translates to roughly 81 degrees Celsius. So that means at 81 degrees Celsius, the solubility of NaCl and KClO3 are the same. With that, we're done going through the solubility curve basic introduction. If you're interested to practice more on using solubility curve, I do have a few practice problems coming up in this series. Definitely do check them out. I'll place their links in the description box below. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.